hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and welcome to this video series which is all about teaching primary maths to the classes which are facing the most serious challenges post lockdown in the 2021-22 academic year. In this video I'm going to explain all about teaching classes for eight to nine year olds who are year four in England or P5 in Scotland or third grade in the US. So in this video, I'm going to describe what's going on in those classes that are facing the most serious challenges. I'm going to talk about how you could use targeted starters every day to fill the specific knowledge gaps that some students have and build fluency for all students, how you can teach the main topics you need to cover this year in ways that will grip all children, even if they've got some gaps in their learning. I'll talk about some of the apparatus and resources that you'll need so you can try and grab any budget that's available at this time of year and spend it wisely. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about preparing for the multiplication tables check, which is only in England. So those of you who don't have to struggle with the multiplication tables check can switch off at that stage or better still, go and watch one of the other math professional development videos on this YouTube channel. OK, so let's get started. What's it like in those classes that are facing the most serious challenges? Well, they exist in the communities where a lot of children were not learning during lockdown. So typically 10 or a dozen children were in school and they've been really well taught and have flown ahead. But there were a lot of children who were out of school and have huge gaps in their learning over the last 18 months which takes us right back to when many of them were just six and were working on foundational concepts in maths. And often schools have been able to make little progress so far in filling those gaps, partly because teaching assistants are caught up working one-to-one -one with children who would otherwise have other support. And teachers have been grappling with behavioral issues, basic reading and writing issues, and so on. But this year we really do need to tackle these gaps in children's learning and heal them and move on positively. So let's get on and talk about the specifics of how we can make amazing progress in maths with these children this year. So the first thing I'm going to suggest is that you do about 10 minutes of work on targeted intervention and fluency on maths at the beginning of each day. So you could have a relevant worksheet on the desk of every child as they come in in the morning. So where do we begin in year four? Well, if you've watched my videos, you'll be able to guess that I'm going to suggest you need to start by checking that children are what we call subordinating partitioning. So in this question 68 add 5, what I mean by subordinating partitioning is that they are partitioning the 5 instinctively into a 2 and a 3 to make that addition easy in two steps. So they did lots of work on partitioning small numbers between the ages of five and seven. And now they need to be able to use that partitioning confidently to do harder calculations. With this one, 27 add eight, we want to partition the eight into a three to get to 30 and know that there's five left, which is going to take us to 35. Now, a lot of your children should be absolutely fluent with this by now, but there's no harm in using at least one day to check because it's such a useful skill to be consciously aware of and to revise. And your superstars may want to go straight onto the fast subtraction sheet, which practices the same idea, but in a slightly harder context. And all your children should check their answers with their one to 100 counting beads, which should show that partitioning with a color change. And your children who are struggling more are going to need to do quite a few of these and they will need to work with the counting beads. And with all these worksheets, there are click through buttons that will allow you to download versions which auto generate more examples of the same worksheet, including worksheets with answers. And of course, these worksheets are all free. So once we've made sure that children can subordinate partitioning, we then want to get them to use that skill and we could give them lots of worksheets on column addition and subtraction where they're using that skill all the time if they're adding say eight and seven as a partial calculation within a bigger calculation and there are plenty of worksheets with visual column addition and subtraction where the children have to set up their own calculations to prove that they deeply understand what's going on and then there are worksheets with just the abstract calculations 
for the children who've proved that they deeply understand what's going on and are ready just to work very quickly through a lot of examples to build their fluency and prove what they can do. Beyond that in year four, we can set them calculation sheets like this as they work on the six times table and they're practicing column multiplication. Now, organizing the sheet in this way means that they're doing all of their multiplications by six many times in the same worksheet. So this is a powerful way of doing lots of practice of the six times table. Now, of course, you don't want to do sheets like this until you're confident that children deeply understand column multiplication, which they should have learned about last year, but they may not have done. So you may need to go back to some easier column multiplications, maybe the column multiplications by two, and do those with your Dean's blocks. There's a video all about that, and here's a link to it now, if you want to know how to teach that really well. And of course, children could also use the Dean's blocks for multiplication by six. It's just a bit harder, so it's nicer if they really deeply understand what they're doing with easier numbers, so that by the time they get to the larger numbers, they can visualize it and have confidence with it and not need to use the blocks. And of course, the other resource we're going to be introducing this year is place value counters, which are easier to use than the blocks because they're so much smaller. And once they've got the hang of column multiplication by a specific number, we can develop their understanding of short division by the same number. And here's a link to a video that explains how to teach that. And this is also amazing practice of the six times table. There are also some other worksheets you can download for free, such as this one on multiplying by 10 and 100. And all these worksheets can be downloaded for free from authenticmaths.co.uk forward slash worksheets. So hopefully you can visualize how your students could be doing some incredibly powerful maths in that first 10 minutes of the day that will have a major positive impact on their learning. And of course, if you have children who are brilliant at all their maths, but have other gaps in their learning, then you can give them tasks relating to those other subjects at the same time. As a change from those worksheets and to help you quickly identify and fill other gaps in students' learning, I'm recommending these propeller boards. They're called Rapid Recall Whiteboards. This is the year three one, and it tells you as the teacher to pick a number between 30 and 60, which you would give to the whole class. They write that number in there and then copy it into all the other shapes that are the same, and then answer these questions for that number. And these questions are really well considered. There's another set on the back of the board, and you can do these with children working in groups and gradually working towards them working on their own. And you can move children who are fluent with all those questions onto the year four boards or even the year five boards. And of course, you can go back to the year two boards or the year one boards for children who are struggling. They really like the fact that these are write on wipe off boards. So if they make mistakes, it really doesn't matter. Right, now let's talk about how you can teach the main year four concepts that your children are gonna to have to learn during your main maths teaching sessions. So what I have for you is a term per page teaching guide. It looks like this. This is a holistic description of what you need to teach in your first half term, your second half term, and so on. And where terms are difficult, there are links to videos that explain those terms and describe in more detail how to teach them effectively. There are also links to the key worksheets that you'll need. All of this is free. As I said before, it's from authenticmaths.co.uk forward slash worksheets. And the methods described here are generally much more efficient and effective than those you'll find in pre-written schemes of work for two reasons. The first is that they are written to empower you, the teacher, to make wise decisions and to move on quickly when your children are understanding what you're saying. And the second is because they teach the underlying structures of maths before they teach particular procedures. When I'm running training for teachers, I describe that as being like teaching children the map of an area before you teach them specific sat-nav routes through it. And when you teach the sat-nav routes, you link them into the map. And gradually the understanding of the map comes to every child and they become fluent and confident and they can puzzle things out for themselves and rebuild specific routes that they've forgotten quite easily. And we're doing the same with the maths. We're teaching them the underlying structures of base 10, the number line, part-part whole modeling, 
array modeling, linear proportion and circular proportion, and then we're building out from there. If you have a fabulous scheme of work that's working for your class, that's absolutely fine. Just go ahead and use it. There are some great schemes out there that are working for many classes. But the point of my YouTube channel is to help you stand outside of any schemes of work you're given and assess them and use them when they're great and adapt them or use something else when they're not really working very well for your class. So the heart of year four teaching is developing fluency with multiplication tables. And we do that generally by learning to skip count the tables. So if we're working on the six times table, it would be about seeing the six and then adding the next six and seeing it going on as a four and a two. So two sixes are 12, three sixes are 18 because we know that two add six is eight. Four sixes, we're going from the 18, and we're adding six. So the first two take us to 20 and then that's going to be 24. So learning to skip count tables, one six is six, two sixes are 12, three sixes are 18, four sixes are 24, where no child is counting on. Every child can work out each of those additions of six in no more than two steps. And then we move on to finding shortcuts. And here, array packs can be great for each result. So children can see how they're linked to each other and can think flexibly about shortcuts. And all of that is explained in this video here. And then we would consolidate our knowledge of the six times tables by working on multiplications by six and divisions by six. And then finally, we go for fluency with lots of rapid practice, possibly with apps like Times Tables Rockstars. And of course, we do that for each multiplication table and then we mix them up. And around that, we'll be doing plenty of work on fractions and decimals and on shape, space, measure and data and the rest of the mass curriculum. But as I said before, it's all explained very succinctly in this document here, which is cross-linked with these codes in each half term to the year four curriculum extract here, which has the same codes. So you can see how everything is covered. And there's also plenty of information on this document about the videos and worksheets that go alongside it. Will children enjoy their maths this year? If they are learning a lot and it's making sense to them and things are clicking into place, they just will at this age. It doesn't have to be super exciting. Children hate maths when they're consistently failing at maths or when they're completely bored, which is rare at this age. But if they're ready to move on beyond the maths you're teaching, then I also recommend in these guides, Gareth Metcalf's I See Reasoning books, which are excellent in challenging the children who are flying. And of course, there's also lots of great activities on Enrich. Okay, so if you've got a little bit of budget at the beginning of this year, then there are some things that you should check that you've got. You need some counting beads for your children who are struggling to visualize the subordination of partitioning. You'll need some arrow cards for the children who are still struggling to decompose numbers because they're often struggling to see them in the correct order. You'll definitely need lots of place value counters. If you can't buy them, just make them out of squares of card in different colors. You'll need some resources for helping children to visualize circular fractions. And I recommend Pizza Fraction Fun because it works so well. I've already recommended Gareth Metcalf's I See Reasoning book for years three and four. You need to make sure you've got plenty of squared paper for your array work. You may need a bigger printing and photocopying budget this year so you can print out worksheets that are targeted at the needs of your students, which are likely to be different from each other and from usual because of COVID. You may want to buy some packs of the Propeller Rapid Recall whiteboards. And you may also want a subscription to Times Tables Rockstars or a similar app for developing fluency with multiplication tables. I love the Times Table Rockstars because it does the multiplication tables so brilliantly and children also do a lot of work on adding and subtracting as they develop their rock star. There's so much in it that's just age appropriate for this level. If you've taught through the last 18 months, it has been truly horrific. Well done for surviving. You've got this, you're amazing. And I really hope you're gonna enjoy your teaching this year. 
I will be here live streaming every nine o'clock on a Sunday morning British time. So if you've got any questions, if you're facing any challenges, please come and chat to me. If you can't make it at that time, just post your questions below this video or in the expert primary maths teaching Facebook group. So if you're not in England and you don't have to deal with the times table check, that's the end of this video. I hope you consider recommending these videos to your friends and colleagues and perhaps subscribing to the channel so you can find it again for other maths professional development videos. Right, those of you who are in England and are struggling with the times table check. When this test was created, it should have been constructed in a way that tested and encouraged children's journey through learning times tables in a wise way, starting with their ability to do tables reliably, working on through skip counting fluently, and then seeing the table shortcuts and gradually working towards automaticity. Now, it isn't reasonable to expect that all eight-year-olds and a lot of the children who will be doing this test will be eight, should achieve automaticity with all their tables results. Unfortunately, the creation of this test was overseen by a minister called Nick Gibb, who has a number of passions. One of those is for a return to Victorian style teaching through rote learning and automaticity rather than through any other route. So he constructed this test to ensure that every question has a six second guillotine so it can only be answered with automaticity and with a 100% pass rate. He's also the minister who rewrote the primary curriculum to make hours younger than anywhere else in the world on the grounds that he didn't believe that age matters for learning. And he's the minister who got rid of children using apparatus in key stage one SATs for things like column addition and subtraction when they're six years old. So it's a wrongly constructed test that should not exist. And it has not yet been through Parliament and it has not yet become statutory. So please write to your MP and please support your unions in any activity to boycott this test. You may have a class who can cope with it. You may be lucky. You may live in an area where most of the children who were at home during lockdown were well taught by their parents and made good progress. And that's fantastic. But there are a lot of teachers out there who are struggling with children who are 18 months behind and are going to have to put their whole classes through this test very soon and it is wrong and it is unfair and unwise to put that pressure on them. And We need to stand up against this particular test in this particular format. It needs to be rewritten so that it follows a wise learning journey and incesses and encourages that wise and appropriate learning journey for children of this age. If you do have to put your children through this test, then stick to your guns, stick to everything we've already discussed about making sure they deeply understand what they're doing with their tables and gradually building their fluency, working towards automaticity and then doing some practice with times tables, rock stars and a little bit of practice for the test. It's all you can do. If you throw all of that out in favour of just practising rote learning for automaticity, your children will miss out in so many essential small steps in their maths learning that are laying secure foundations for their future learning. I am so sorry to have to be saying this. I wish this was not going on. So I need to leave you on a positive note. I think you're going to have an amazing year. Don't let silly things from government drag you down. Enjoy your teaching. Enjoy having your children back in class, hopefully. And if you get stuck and you get stressed about your maths teaching, please come and chat to me. Take care. Bye for now.